you for the super chat. Love uh, Techno's video on SACD. Would what would benefit to finding the crossover for speakers compared to the just set them at eighty? Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, great question. Joe had a, um, you know, Joe does all these uh, these wacky, wacky remote, wacky remote uh, calibrations. And uh, one of the things is like, uh, look, if you have uh, if you have a seventy hertz null from your subwoofer. In, in your ma main listening position, like that happens quite a bit. And you, you know, you can lower your mains to 60 hertz, and now you can kind of cover that area with your main left and right speakers. Now, um, a lot of the times, and even somebody was like, even somebody commented something silly, like, oh, I just use, I just do what uh, Odyssey tells me, and it's fine. And I was like, okay, sure. I've had, I think I count, I think I've actually had 10 receivers in here across Denon and Marantz. So that's Odyssey XT32, right? It has been around for a long time. Sure. And each of those receivers have put crossovers for my height channels and my surround channels channels in weird ass places. Yeah. Like nothing has ever been consistent. It was yeah, consistently it bad, <laughs> but but it's not. It's, it's some of them are higher, some of them are lower. I'm like these are the same oh shit. These are the same speakers like what's going on? So, and then the guy's like, oh, well, you know, I just go back and change them. I'm like, okay, great. Well, we, now you don't have to. Now you don't have to do this song and dance with the AVR. You can just hear what's happening. Um, but yeah. Later, FOMO. But yeah. Take care, FOMO. Hey, yeah, buddy. We'll see you next time, man. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, uh, I'm glad you like it. You know, that was one of the, one of the things when Joe and I were making it. We're like, okay, what else do we need to do? Mm -hmm. What else can we tackle? Um, that you what normally your, can't. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Michael? Do you usually uh, let it let the auto calibration just do its thing and just whatever it sets it at, or yeah. do you always set it at eighty? How, what's your method? No, um, and I don't have a. I mean, I can't honestly say I've got a scientific method to do it. I know that when I had the Lascalas, man, it would set them at forty hertz. There's no way on the planet they could play down to forty hertz. They even looking at PKW's kind of white papers on it. I think he said they're they're kind of like effective down to about 70 hertz. So they they didn't belong being down there for right. I don't know why it measured them. Maybe it's because it's in my cabinet. You know, it's behind kind of like in that little alcove yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that could be impacting that. Um, with the JTRs, I actually just asked the owner. I'm like, you know, what do you typically run these at? And he's like, dude, I run them at 60 hertz all day long. No problem. And so I've set mine to 60 hertz on my LCRs. So, but the rest of them, I pretty much leave those. I mean, because they're usually Odyssey will run those either at like 80 or 70 for the side surrounds and, and then the Atmos sometimes or the height channels are a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen Odyssey um, set my, set my height channels to 120 and then the same height channels on a different receiver to 150. So well, like, what um, I think is funny is when Odyssey does my LCRs and they're different. Like they're the same identical speaker, man. What the heck? Yeah. Why would one be 80 and one be 60 yeah. or whatever? You know, so, uh, set, it, set your Lascalas to 40, which is lower yeah, than that's ridiculous. Yeah. To me, that's the worst thing it could do, actually, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. if you set it too low and then you go and turn it up to you know too high. Whatever, yeah, then you hear you're like, oh, what's that sound? Yeah, it doesn't sound. Oh, good. yeah, that speaker can't handle that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's because, you know, my theory is when they're doing these, the level matching, they're doing all this stuff, they're not checking for distortion, right? They're just they're, they're like, oh, I hear bass down to forty, right? Yeah, that's cool. But if you were to turn it up just even a little bit more, it could be game over for that speaker, yes. right? So they're not checking for those th sorts of things. That's something that you have to check. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of why we've done it too. Is like you know, check, you know, see what each speaker can play down to, and turn it up, turn it up to a loud volume, and see if it's making some bad noises. All right? Some and loud noises. Turn it back down. Well, noises. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't keep it up there. Uh, so yeah, it's a good way to to. And I like Michael said that you know you uh, you check with the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And see what they recommend. So then you know that you're not going to overdrive your speakers. Mess things up. Huh? Yeah. Which you probably wouldn't anyway because they're so efficient. Yeah. But that's a good way to do it. And 
But I think what Sean is saying, though, is when you look at the speakers in the room, then you have to factor in how do they interact. And what you're saying is exactly right, Shauna. You Let's say if you have a single sub, right, which we don't recommend. We recommend having more than one. But let's just say, let's say you have two, whatever, right? But for whatever reason, you those subs, wherever they're placed, you have 70 hertz dip, right? Everything else is perfect, but then at 70 hertz, whatever, you get a cancellation at your main listening position. But let's say your, your main speakers are in a different place and they can play 70 hertz fine. Right? Let's say your your floor standing speakers can actually play down to 40 hertz. All right. So if you chose, you know, a higher frequency, let's say if you chose 80, that null, so it's going to be the subs are going to take over below 80. And it's not perfect, right? It's not like they don't meet like this, right? They kind of cross over like that. But if uh, if the subs are handling that, or they're the ones that are mainly handling that, well, they have a dip. They can't, there's no sound there. Whereas if, if you were to cross over it lower, let's say it's 60, then your main speakers that don't have that null at 70, then, you know, they would handle that region. And now you'd have a smooth response, right? There's no, no, no place where you have a null. And that's why you may want to go and check, right? Just try different ones. And the tough thing is what tones would you use, right? Yeah. A sweep is, whoop, okay, well... That's too fast, right? Pink noise is all the sound at once. So it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, is it missing a frequency here? I don't know. But with ours, it just goes through the octaves, right? And then it goes up. And so because there's steps and because there's a visual that goes along with it, you can kind of get get an idea where your nulls and peaks are and mm -hmm. try to make sure that you don't have any after you're all done. So that's all. Yeah. Make sure to join us every Monday for our live stream at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at youtube.com forward slash daily i5.